Hey guys, welcome to my next video and this is Mickey from CoinOpNewYork.com and Mickey's Antique Amusements on Facebook and in Rochester, New York. And we thought we'd talk about a 1937 Wolitzer model 616. These were made in the 30s by Wolitzer and we have an unusual model that we picked up along the way and we're going to take you outside and take a tour of it and check it out. But we wanted to talk about the history of Wolitzer jukeboxes and the models and how they were made. Um, so at the beginning, Wolitzer made a lot of great jukeboxes with their uh, simplex mechanisms. And uh, those were came from uh, Mr. Capehart, who had bought the rights to them. And he went to work for Wolitzer, and he made these uh, mechanisms here, the simplex. And Wolitzer started putting them in their uh, wooden cabinets. And as you can see... In 1937, this was a model 616, and these were wooden. You can sort of see they're all wood. There's no light-up plastics on them whatsoever. And that's normally how you would find a model 616. And this is just a little example of what one would look like. But as time went on, the jukeboxes started appearing with more lights and plastics and stuff like that. So what the manufacturers did was is they designed a 616 cabinet, these were not Wolitzer manufacturers, they were other manufacturers, but they had plastics in them, meaning the plastic, they started putting plastics in the cabinet to make them light up, to make them more modern, because the jukeboxes that were out on location that were all wood were sort of bland, and the bar owners and restaurant owners wanted something that would show uh, a light up model. So what ended up happening is, and we'll We'll scroll through this. Here's another one right here. And we'll scroll down. This is a great history site on the internet, Jukebox World. So if you want to get information on jukeboxes, I recommend going to it. And it's a plug for their website. So Jukebox World and go to their archive. Anyways, as you can see as we go through, and we'll get down here to the bottom, you could see that there's companies that made these light-up cabinets. So again, this is a model 616, but look, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine plastics, right? And there was different companies, Cass, Gerber and Glass, Cochran, Jacobs Novelty, KEB, Packard, and Stark Novelty. <coughs> Excuse me, I had to uh, sneeze. So as you can see, this one was made by the Archie Cass Corporation in Newark, New Jersey. So it's a light-up model. See, 1939. So the cabinet was made in 39, even though the Wolitzer 616 was made in 1937. Two years later, they made a cabinet that looked just like a 616, but yet had the plastic. And this helped the bar owner say, hey, look, it's a beautiful new jukebox. They took the components out of the 616 and put them in these cabinets. And it was something that you could do rather cheaply because the, the jukeboxes were fully working. They just wanted a light up cabinet. This was a way to improve the cabinet. So as you can see, there's, there's different styles here. As we go through, there's Gerber and glass right there, right? And you could sort of see more plastics here and light up. Look at these plastics around here. Very, very interesting that with this. Very, very nice. So this really pizzazzed up these jukeboxes and made them more desirable. And um, here's one by uh, the company uh, Corcoran or Cochran. And you could sort of see with the uh, with these sort of wooden things that wrap around. Very Art Deco. I think that's very, very beautiful if you look at that. Isn't that neat? And they called this a luxury light-up model. Then we get into this really cool one by Jacob's, Jacob's Novelty, and they put this thing in here, and it would hide the record mechanism. But this really beautified the jukebox and made it look fantastic. Um, here's another one here by a manufacturer out of England, out of the UK, and you can see where they put the, the long plastic down here with the, with the, with the metal casting here. Again, nine, all, all the way up till 1948. This, this is a, a Wolitzer 616 Guts with a 48 cabinet that is made to look like a 616, right? Here's one made by Packard, and it was this cabinet was made in 1940. Again, totally changed. So 
It's interesting when you get into these older jukeboxes, you can see the Jacobs Novelty was 39. The Corcoran or Cochran was 38. So basically what you end up with is a model 616 jukebox or a 616A. And you had all these different cabinets with the plastics that were made years after. You saw one as late as 1948. So we get back to the original cabinet here of a 616, right? Here's a 616A. And then you get over here another 616A, which is an earlier version, right? And then you get into the original 616, and that's what it looked like. So people m most likely... When they view these cabinets and they view these jukeboxes, they, there's a lot of confusion because they'll go on the internet and they'll look and say, hey, I've got a model 616. And then they'll compare the cabinet and there's so many different variations that it's confusing to somebody that's trying to research it. And the purpose of this video was to show you the difference and what occurred in jukebox history that the manufacturers, and even during World War II, there was a, a loss of production because the jukebox companies were making products to win the war and you couldn't use the metals and, and stuff like that. That all had to go towards the war. So the manufacturers were left with just using wood and some plastics and they wanted to make their jukeboxes look beautiful and they didn't want them just to just have a wooden model. They wanted lights in them because that attracted people to put coins in them. So that's a little history behind the Woolitzer model 616-616A from 1937. Now we're going to go outside. I'm going to join. The okay, so now we're going to go outside. We had to restart the video and look at a, a very strange conversion that was done to a model 616 jukebox. This has a, this has a leather top with a hump. It's got nine compartments for the plastics that light up and it's been painted in a faux pas crackle paint meaning it's an original paint job from the factory of one of the companies and I haven't determined which company did this yet but they painted the cabinet with a multitude of colors and it's more of a faux pas kind of uh, looking cabinet with a crackle paint and it's got nine locations meaning nine different plastics so it's very deluxe luxury style light up jukebox it's a Woolitzer 616 so let's go on outside and we're going to take a look at the cabinet I hope you're enjoying this little walk through history of Woolitzer jukeboxes the model 616 from 1937 all right let's go on out and take a look okay now on to part two of the video and here we get a chance to look at this Woolitzer model 616 and uh, yeah it's cold out <laughs> snow going on here but anyways uh there's all the machines lots of machines but <clears throat> let's get back to this cabinet uh this is a deluxe cabinet uh light up cabinet and uh, it's pretty cool i think um obviously they made these as all wood models and they didn't have any light up on them whatsoever but the difference with this one is and I guess I call it a luxury light up even though that's not the official name but if you look at the amount of places that can light stuff up when a plastic is here and it's got like this hump on it which is unusual and here you can see there's one there and one here and one here and then you've got one here and here and you've got the inner ones here and then one here and one here. So that's pretty elaborate for a wood model Woolitzer from the late 30s. And uh, this has the faux pas crackle paint on it. I guess you want to call it faux pas or crackle. This is actually wood here, but it's been painted. This is factory. This was not done with the leather, leather top. So this is leather right here. Very unusual. I love Woolitzer jukeboxes, and this is a, a different example of a Woolitzer jukebox model 616. Lots of fun to look at this sort of stuff. With the metal grill, and you can sort of see the uh, grill cloth behind it. Now, I don't know 
if something went all the way across to here I can't tell if that's broken off or it just ended there to me it looks like it just ended there let's go ahead and open this up take a look inside it's got the original bear claw tone arm there and your selector plates the original title strip holder here 16 selections it's all there does have the cartridge in there you can see it right there which is nice very very nice original Wolitzer window glass let's go around back take a look here is the back doors that's the decorative panel for the upper back door as you can see and then the lower back door getting into the back here we have the amplifier and the original speaker really cool stuff volume control key uh, you've got your junction box that everything plugs into it's missing the cover missing the coin box and uh, it's got the coin tube coin slides one of the coin slides is broken everything else looks to be there this was part of the plastic here it was a plastic and uh, you can sort of see the light bulbs and you can see why those incandescent light bulbs would burn the uh, would would heat up those plastics so that wasn't good difficult to get those plastics in because you got to do it from the inside not from the outside so you got to take all this out to get the new plastics in and that and original woolets are amplifier and we got some sort of cover down here. I don't know what this is, but just laying there. We just picked this up yesterday. And it's got a number on this mechanism here. I don't know what this is. Let's see if we can look at that. 210 something nine. I'm not exactly sure what that is. And that, very, very cool. Your record counter tray here. And then here's your placard on the back, as you can see, right down there, it's a model 616. And the numbers match, matching numbers. So there you have it. Let's focus a little more here. Sorry for the, the focus. Sorry about that. There we go. Overall, it's in it's in pretty nice shape. Needs a good cleaning, and obviously going through. And this would be a fabulous jukebox to restore. Hopefully, we'll restore it for the jukebox museum we're going to be doing the nonprofit. And uh, so, if you like this video, make sure you uh, give me the thumbs up. This is part of jukebox history here. Sort of a cabinet you don't see very much, and sort of the model that has the extra light up package in the uh, cabinet so that's something you don't see very often so it's sort of a neat jukebox to look at even though it's a woody from the 1930s all right so if you have an old jukebox you want to sell that's not working we're located in rochester new york my name's mickey i'm the owner of mickey's antique amusements give me a call we ship them all over the united states we'll pick them up 585 585-747-0605 don't be shy. Give me a call. Check out my website, coinopnewyork.com, or go to my Facebook page, Mickey's Antique Amusements. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.